I love jamming with the birds. Colin Banois, guten Abend. Buenos noches, everybody. Come on in, down to the den, you're all welcome. Ah, happy days, me ducks and drakes, me dogs and cats. Once again, live. It's live. Anything could happen and probably will. I can't believe it. it must have been two years ago that me and Sally got up and recorded the Dawn Chorus. <laughs> wow, must have been. Yeah, it was. <sighs> Looks like you're all in good form. <laughs> Hope so. I hope so. I'm in good form. Except I can't drink. Ever since COVID, the booze sends me weird. What a strange side effect. I thought it can't be, it must be something else. Damn.
Refuge, a Birchall Davis composition. Can you believe it? The weather. It's been freezing cold for about five months and today it was too hot in here. <sighs> but you remember what happened the last time I left the door open to let a bit of air in? Flipping Felix the cat snuck in. Frightened the life out of me when I came in. It went whew. And then today, first time I opened the doors to let a bit of air in and went to get a drink of water. A massive hornet about that long. Buzzing away. Got him out. <laughs> it's been so noisy in here. It's been so much buzzing. Is, is, it, is it a sax? Is it a bee? Because then a big fat bee came in. About that big. It was much harder to catch. I had a real... <laughs> the buzz was so loud, man. It's like it's drowning me out. Anyway. Doors are closed. Insects safely escorted from the Zen Den. Can't we have it where it's not too hot and not too cold? Like the porridge, like Goldilocks had. Ah, yeah. We're going to have foot patting. Me and Marky Creswell and Simon Goulding just jamming on a blues. The 12 bar blues, you've all heard of the 12 bar blues. It's so much of modern music would not be here if it wasn't for the 12 bar blues, which sort of came to light about 120, 130 years ago, I think, I don't know, in America. People singing the blues. And that became the basis of rock and roll and a lot of soul and rhythm and blues and so much of that 12 bar blues in there. And it, the kind of sax players I love, like Junior Walker, King Curtis, all that lot. Some of their tunes, you know, I mean, they call them a, a tune. They've got registered tune writers and everything. But it's just, hey, let's do a 12 bar, guys, and let's have a blow and see what happens. It's, it's one of them, really. But, uh, yeah, I'll try and sort of play a bit of what King... Oh, this is King Curtis wrote this foot patting blues, what we was going to play. And I'll do a few of his lines and a few of my lines. And <laughs> see if we get together at the end at the same time. Where's the boys on the hard drive? <sighs> Are you there, fellas? What? What?
should have left it up until the end. The great Simon Goulding. The unbelievably wonderful Mr. Mark Cressel. Groove. Don't need no drums when you've got those two. Cats. Yeah. Solid, solid, solid. Is Sally sax sock when you need it. Oh, it's working. Kind of. Should we dance? <clears throat> Should we dance cheek to cheek? <laughs> Let's. I love to think of you guys floating around the kitchen or the lounge or the. You might be outside tonight, patio. I'm floating around the den. Let's dance cheek to cheek. <laughs>
I'm in heaven Down the Zenden When we're dancing cheek to cheek Lovely oh, We all need to dance more I think Michael Mosley's going to tell us that Unless he already has Do you listen to that Just One Thing on Radio 4? <clears throat> what was it? I listened to it yesterday Oh it was a bit. It was a bit technical. <laughs> Wish I hadn't started this. It was eccentric exercise, or eccentric, spelt eccentric, I think. But the boffin, there's a boffin on every week, and he was saying eccentric. But the gist of it is that it's actually you're getting more exercise on your way down. No. Oh yeah, yeah. Say you're doing a press up or a squat. You know, it feels like the hard bit is pushing yourself up or bringing yourself back up, but actually you're getting more exercise, burning more calories and all that, and doing more goodness on the way down. And presumably, coming down a mountain is doing you more good than and coming down the stairs. I don't know. <laughs> is it, does it make any difference? Oh, we all have to sit down slowly. Because you're doing so much good as you sit down. Anyway, I think he's going to do dancing soon. It's just one thing. If you <laughs> Why did I start this? You know, in case you haven't heard it. He's a doctor bloke, and it's just one thing that might do you good, make you more healthy, happier, live longer, go to the doctors less. All that. It's like an apple a day. He hasn't done apples, but he did do beetroot. Apparently that enhances... Uh, well, makes you run faster. Apparently they sold out of beetroot juice... On London Marathon Day. <laughs> I don't really want to run it any faster. I just plod along, I don't mind. I plod along and people pass me in bright colours. I'm used to it. There's a run I do in Tokyo. It's it's probably the most run run <laughs> in Tokyo. But I do it because it's quite convenient because the, the hotel we stay in is only about half a mile from... And, and it's around the Palace Gardens. It's not quite as sort of glamorous and uh, not glamorous. It's not quite as sort of scenic as it sounds because you, you're on roads most of the time. But you know you're running past along the uh, emperor emperor's moat a lot of the time, and uh, it's all right. And most most of the vehicles are electric now over there, so you're not. <laughs> well, I get passed by old ladies, <laughs> very old ladies. <laughs> I'm just used to it, you know, I don't feel the shame anymore. <laughs> yeah, what are we talking about? I don't know, how do we get onto just one thing? Oh, dancing. I think that's, yeah, I think that's coming up. So we did beetroot, and then the one I heard yesterday was the eccentric exercise. There's one I missed. This is in the new series, I don't matter. It might come to me, it might not. <laughs> Here's one. I think I did it once, maybe twice. It's an old, old, old tune played by the old, old, old Snakey. I wrote it for, well, I wrote it for me, and that's what I write most things for. Or possibly a child. It's called My Little One. But um, it was used on the Paradise Club. And uh, that was BBC, I think, wasn't it? So BBC paid for the recording. That was nice. And uh, <clears throat> I dug it out, I think. I dug it out for you guys. After having not I played it for at least a decade. Anyway. This version is just me and Steve Walsh. Currently residing in Leeds on the piano. Yep, we can do this, I think. Not quite sure I remember the form. It's a little bit weird, but you know, I'm sure we'll get to the end at the same time. Three, four, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
my little one. Uh, I was prepping that f f for you today, and uh, obviously it always gives me memories of uh, working on the Paradise Club. Which most of you are far too young to remember. It was a gangster thing with Leslie Grantham, Don Henderson, is that his name? Gruff, villainous type in his character. And uh, Sheila Grant was in it as well. I really like her. I was in something else with her as well. And I was my part. <laughs> I was cast as the sax player playing at the at the funeral, you know, by the at the graveside. In the Paradise Club, I was cast as the resident sax player in the club, the Paradise Club. And, uh, yeah, so I wasn't on set for a long time. You know, I didn't get my own trailer, as they're called. But just hanging out with those guys, I was really excited. Lovely people, all of them. Had a good time. Hey, Ted. How are you doing? With Sue there. We need young blood. Have you got a hundred friends that will come and watch the stream, please? Oh, well, good to see you there, Ted. Ah. Oh, I'm going to play... Um, the lark song. We've got a, we've got a birdies theme. It's the dawn chorus. It always tickles me when I see it in the folder. <clears throat> so, <laughs> we have there's a process involved, as you can imagine, a technical process of kind of bringing the pre-recorded bits, like the dawn chorus and like the duets and the fakies, bringing them. Off the hard, off some hard drive, back onto the current project kind of thing. And uh, the Dawn Chorus recording, Joe's titled it "Morning Birdies." <laughs> Always like that. And uh, so this is the lark. This is the lark song. So I can't remember its proper title. And uh, we need a fakey. I remember its title. It's "Lark in the Clear Air." I think I did it for Mucky Boots, didn't I? Originally? Mm, I think so. I reckon I did. What a, oh man. So I was prepping this today and it's just been a beautiful earworm wherever I've gone, whatever I've been doing. It's been in my mind. So I better get the notes roughly in the right order now or my inner self will be very critical. What do we need for this? Less of that, more of that, a bit of that, a bit more of that, none of that.
Thank you, Mr. Fakester. And I'll dedicate that one to you, Stephen, even if it wasn't you that originally mentioned it, but I think it was. But the memory of a snake is very small. Very small indeed. Yeah, I've mentioned the, uh, but I've just, but some things I do remember. I remember now we were talking about uh, Michael Mosley and just one thing. Years ago on the live stream, because we were all standing on one leg, weren't we? I'm going to do it now. <clears throat> I'm on one leg. But. Because that's something which is, uh, is very good for us, apparently. And it's much, much harder if you do it with your eyes closed. I'm going to close my eyes now. You know, even 10 seconds with your eyes closed is, is very good and very hard. So Ron was doing it because Ron's blind, so his eyes are always closed, so technically, or not technically, figuratively. So, and I think he did pretty well. I don't know if it's Ron with us tonight? I don't know. I haven't had a minute to look at the chat, you guys. But yeah, that's right. I did remember. That was the first series. This might even be the third. I don't know. It's been a lot. <laughs> How you get along with the, with the whistle, you new whistlers, Julie and Mr. Green, Mr. Green person. Well, I trust, remember, it's all in the breath, or well, most of it is. Fingering's not that hard, it's basic recorder, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Plus a bit of that. <clears throat> you want to see some pictures? Not many, not many since last week, but worth a look though. The creatures are back, brought out by the sunshine. Lovely froggy and that's, uh, I can never remember the name of that, it begins with A <coughs> and that's um, Primus Agavana or something. Japanese, I should know. I can never remember that either. Oh, I'm useless. I know that's the great crested newt, though. I'm pretty sure it is. I know you saw them last week, but they're different this week. <laughs> they've changed. They've changed nearly every day. It's fantastic. Long may they last, although it won't be long, will it? Ah, now that's impressive, isn't it? Uh, John and Joan sent us that, the Eastbourne Fan Club, because they're on the road in Northumberland, and that is adjacent to the River Tweed. <laughs> Snaky bench. And Sally reckons she's seen that. So we reckon it must be up Berwick or Annick or over towards Holy Island, somewhere over there. What else? Ah, yeah, I just thought this was looking lovely, this Acer in the, in the light today. I did a little video of it as well. Oh, I forgot there was going to be sound on that. Oh, more morning birdies, afternoon birdies. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's my project when we say goodbye. I was supposed to do it today, but I didn't flipping, kept getting it wrong. But I'm doing a comparison of these three horns. That's cheap and cheerful. Second hand, 200 quid. That's the one I play all the time now, the Yanagasala, very beautiful horn, and that is the trusty old Selma Mark VI, that's 70 years old, that one, older than me, older than any of you. And so what I'm going to do for a little YouTube thing, because people often ask, you know, what's, what sack should I buy, what's the best, should I get a vintage one, should I get a modern one, should I buy second hand, should I buy used, so I have this, uh, good idea it seemed at the time that I'd take those three horns play them and I play them blind so you can't see what I'm playing and you have to guess which is which and, and then we'll talk about them and I should have done it yesterday and I didn't get it together and I was going to do it today before the stream and I didn't get it together so it's it's my after stream task so 
I can't go for a glass of wine anyway because it made me poorly. <laughs> uh, right, let me get back on the right screen. Decide what to play for you guys next. Oh yeah, I know. Got time for a couple more, haven't we? Uh, yes, Snakey. Oh, Herbie's here as well. Herbie, how you doing, mate? Are you related to Ted? Yeah? Are you bigger or smaller? Or exactly the same? Herbie and Ted bringing the average age down. Need the young... Need the... We need all generations on the, on the live stream. And Ron is here. Are you on one leg, Ron? <coughs> I might play this next tune standing on one leg. I do try and practice on one leg sometimes. But if I was going for a whole song, I'd have to swap legs in the middle. <laughs> Need a leg camera. Joe? No, we don't. Could end badly. Could end in a... Me in a crumpled mess, a crumpled expensive mess, having locked, knocked over a few much-loved saxophones. Right. I was practicing this for you today. <clears throat> Anne and Richard, I know Anne, Anne likes it, and Richard request a v, requested a V. It's for Valerie. And, uh, I think I'm on the original of this. It's a piece of useless information.
Wasn't she absolutely wonderful? <sighs> missed, sadly missed. Yeah, a great, a great. <clears throat> I feel some funky flute coming on. Funky shoes, funky flute. Funky shoes, funky flute. Move the wrong slider. Oh, guys. Relive dangerously down the den. What's happening next week? I'll be here. I hope you will be too. Let's meet down the den. Again, let's not try to look any further than that. My brain is too small, but I'll be here next week. Same time, same place. <clears throat> I do like a bit of radio for you, <laughs> you probably gathered. I know it's a, a songwriter talking about her love of Springsteen. Brucey, Mr. Bruce Springsteen. Should give him his full title, shouldn't I? Shouldn't we? And I was thinking, yeah, I love him too. I only know one Bruce song. So, that, so that's what you're gonna get to finish off. But it's got a great, um, great burst of sax, a la Clarence Clemens in the middle. So it's well worth having. So we'll have it. We'll have it as a finisher. Instead of a moody one. You can't be moody all your life. Ah, oh, it's Midge's birthday. Happy birthday, Midge. Fantastic. Have a good one. Have you got party food and lots of drink? I hope so. Cheers. Sing along with me. Drown me out. Come on. <clears throat> I sound much better if you drown me out.
singing and doing your air sax or your real sax some of you <clears throat> it's a good job I left that one to the end oh thank you to zoom karaoke for that sterling backing track and for uh, Valerie too and Simon Goulding Mark Creswell fakey Birchie and the boys Stevie Walsh too <clears throat> and most important, Ted, Herbie, Ron, Stephen, Diane, you guys, Val, Mike Cole. Oh, I'm still enjoying my book. It's a tome. It's that thick. Thank you so much, you guys. 
they all contributed and wrote them nice things and it makes me shy but happy oh, thank you so much so everybody's oh i'm all excited and breathe and relax and i'll see you next week take good care of yourselves go steady be kind to everybody to each other but to yourself too stand on one leg eat beetroot take good care Thank you.